Hello, everyone. My name is Kieran McDonnell. I am a painter by trade, but I am open to a wide variety of mediums, including sculpture, which you will see in my latest exhibition titled Scrupulosity. Scrupulosity, besides the title of my show, is actually a subset of OCD, your obsessive compulsive disorder. One of those offsets of the um umbrella that we know as OCD is scrupulosity, which comes from the Latin word scruples, sharp stone. As a sharp stone in your shoe causes annoying irritation every time you step, any place of the day that you're at, you experience these nagging worries and concerns that most of us just ignore or that we know are not being serious. But to the scrupulous person, they are serious. And they attack a person's religious beliefs. Now, for me, I am a Roman Catholic and have been so by birth, or what we call a cradle Catholic. But as I've grown up, I've developed this irrational fear of hell, eternal damnation, of offending God. This can be manifested in many different ways. Predominant ways for me are just annoying thoughts and feelings that make me feel like I am a evil, terrible person that I need to rush over to confess my sins to a priest to be absolved. But through the work of anti-anxiety medication and the help of God-sent therapists, I have been able to manage my scrupulosity and be far more calm, more collected, and more joyful in my life. When did I first get into art? That is a good question. And to answer that, we need to go back a couple of decades, actually, to when I was only three or four years old, to a video that my father showed me this past Christmas, which I had seen, I think, for the very first time, of me at a table in our first home with a long sheet of paper stretched out on a coffee table. I was taking markers in my fist and drawing these abstract, colorful shapes. And along with that, Another thing I noticed is that I would line up the markers in precise order and make them nice and flush with each other. Even when I was a toddler, I was starting to show signs of my OCD and just my desire for perfection and just for order and alignment. And just 20 years later, here I am making art on a much more sophisticated scale and able to live and enjoy my independence as well. Now, I really started getting into painting, which is the primary medium for this show, when I was in college. But when I started to paint, it was surreal and just something different. This medium was so different from what I've normally used, and the colors were brighter. It was much more permanent, more beautiful. And it just took off from there. Soon, I transferred from painting at RCTC to painting at Winona State University. And at that point, I got more opportunities to paint and to freely express myself. After I graduated in 2019, I just kept painting over and over again, and I just loved it. But I gradually transferred from oils, which is what I predominantly use in college, to acrylics, because I wasn't a big fan of the drying time of oils and acrylics were just more appealing to me with their brighter colors and the ease of them to mix and the quickness of them to dry so I could apply just another layer onto them. Now, there are many different paintings that I have made for this exhibition and a few sculptural elements as well, but I wanted to take the time to point out to you a couple of my favorite pieces, and I wanted to give you a little background behind their meaning and their purpose. Now this is stained, and like several of the paintings in this exhibition, they are a combination of acrylic, as emphasized in the black, white, and gray areas of the piece, and then the colored element, which is oil painting. Now this was to make a great distinction between the world that everyone else lives in, the gray, and the world that I live in with the color. Here, I am in this in the home parish that I attended for many years in here in Rochester, St. Pius X Church. And here I am on the second floor where there's this 
huge, beautiful stained glass windows that compile to form, among other things, Moses with the Ten Commandments. And here, I am on the ground in a low position, not fetal, but at the same time not strong and confident. These rails act as a prison, holding me in as the law of the Lord hangs over my head, not as a place of joy, but as a place of imagined condemnation and fear. I am very happy with how this painting turned out. I think exudes faulty perception of controlling power that so many Catholics, not just the scrupulous, tend to fall into instead of seeing the laws of God as a way to restrict us or to make us feel pain and suffering, they are meant to free us, meant to let go of our chains and help us to feel truly free in this world that we struggle to live in at times. And I really hope that people can see that symbolism in this piece. What you have here is a depiction of four very famous scrupulosity sufferers and three anonymous sufferers in the modern age. Now, the mirrors on these anonymous people's faces give you the opportunity to put your own face into there. And pretty much you're putting, being in their shoes, like you are, your face is among those who have suffered along with you. Not only suffered, but yet done great and succeeded greatly in life and in their faiths. We have St. Ignatius of Loyola, who had a very temporary bout of scrupulosity. We have Martin Luther, who many believe suffered from scrupulosity and ultimately what led him to break away from the Catholic Church. He was still a very holy man, but yet, despite his best efforts to please, he could not get this just negativity out of his head. St. Therese of Lisieux, the little flower. And here she is holding a crucifix of flowers. And she is famous for having what I believe was a temporary bout of scrupulosity like St. Ignatius. And then finally, this is St. Alphonsus de Liguori, who is not only a saint, but a doctor of the church. And what's unique about him is that he suffered for, from scrupulosity for his entire life. He was the pioneer behind giving helpful guidance, writing papers, describing the scrupulous condition, and actually giving ways and helpful spiritual advice to those who suffer from it. And even today, his work is used in books like Understanding Scrupulosity, which gives such wonderful advice on how to live out your life as a Catholic in the church with scrupulosity and find joy in it. And I often pray to him for intercession as well. To sum up the piece, it is one of the largest that I have ever made. And I'm planning to go much bigger in the future, but I'm just very pleased with how it all came together and just how it exudes hope. And that's its point. Unlike the other pieces which are meant to give you an illustration of what it's like to be inside my head or the head of another scrupulous Catholic, this is meant to give you hope, letting you know that in the halls of heaven there are thousands of people, thousands who have gone through scrupulosity and other disorders as well, and that you are not alone in this. And even today, there are still, I want to say around, well, just thousands of different scrupulosity sufferers of the Catholic tradition and countless others in different denominations and faiths. And just knowing that the worst thing that you can suffer with in life is the feeling of being alone, that no one understands your suffering except for you. But that's not true. There is a whole bunch of people who do. And that just knowing that is one of the greatest comforts that you can give someone. That is one of the best things you can do is saying, you are not alone in this. You are not alone in this struggle. And I very much hope that anyone who comes to see this, who suffers from scrupulosity, can feel that and feel that love that everyone deserves 
and that sense of belonging that we are all called to have, regardless of our faiths or traditions. And even though that this is through a Catholic perspective, my message is for anyone who suffers from scrupulosity, regardless of any faith, that you are not alone. You do not have to suffer in silence. 